E-commerce has been growing year on year for the past 10 years. So if your business isn't online, you're massively missing out. However, creating an e-commerce store for your business can seem daunting and complicated. So in today's tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to set up an e-commerce store from scratch using the world's most popular website builder, WordPress. I'll be showing you how to set up hosting and WordPress, how to install a theme, how to add e-commerce functionality to your website, how to build your store using a drag and drop page builder, how to set up payments, and also how to create the necessary pages for your store, such as the contact us and terms of service. And the best part is I'll be showing you how to do all of this in under 90 minutes, so you can get an e-commerce store set up for your business in just a few clicks. This is Elliot with Verpex, and let's begin the tutorial. So let me show you the store we will be building in today's tutorial. As you can see, it is a beautiful and clean design. I'll be showing you how to create an amazing hero image. I'll be showing you how to embed your best sellers onto your homepage, and also how to go and add different categories to your homepage as well, and how to create an amazing footer with all of your necessary pages. I'll also be showing you how to create all of these necessary pages so that they look clean and go with the rest of the branding of your store. And I'll also be showing you how you can create category pages and add products to your store and how you can go and add variable products so that customers can go and select different variations of things such as size and color. And then once a customer has chosen their variation, they can simply add this to the cart. And from here, they can click on view the cart and then they can go and proceed to the checkout. And then of course, I will be showing you how you can go and set up your payment processes so that you can accept debit and credit card and PayPal. So without further ado, let's begin the tutorial and we're going to start off with purchasing some hosting in order to build our store. So in order to build an e-commerce website with WordPress, you are going to need something called hosting, which allows your website to be live on the internet. So I'll leave a link in the description to our hosting plans here at Verpex, because this is going to be the hosting that I use to set up the website in this tutorial. Now with Verpex hosting, you get a number of features that will allow you to easily set up your e-commerce website with WordPress. Firstly, you get a domain included. So that means you get a domain name for your e-commerce website. We allow one click WordPress installation. So that just means that you can install WordPress super easily and have your website set up within a matter of minutes. You get 24 seven tech support. So if you're ever having any problems or your site is down, we can fix it pretty much straight away with our 24 seven support. You do get daily backups so that your website is always backed up and there aren't any issues or security problems. And you also get unlimited SSL certificates. So that allows you to have this little padlock in the URL. And that is essential for building an e-commerce website because that is what builds trust with your website visitors. And by building trust, that allows you to make more sales for your e-commerce website. So if you just go to the link in the description, you will come over to this page go to web hosting and click on WordPress hosting. And from here, you can see all of our packages. Now we do also offer a 45 day money back guarantee. So if you're not satisfied with the hosting, you can always contact us and we can try and resolve the problem for you. So go and have a look at some of our packages. They are super affordable. As you can see, we're starting at just $50 for the first month and it renews at $5 per month. So that's $60 for the year to run your e-commerce site. And you can easily upgrade to one of our other affordable packages. So all you need to do from here in order to get your hosting is just click on start now. Now from here, you can choose your billing term. So you can choose to pay annually or to pay monthly, and then you can choose your server location. So I recommend choosing the server location that is closest to the customers that you are going to be targeting for your e-commerce store. So for example, if you are mostly going to be targeting customers in the US, then I would choose a US server location. If you're going to be targeting customers in the UK, I would choose London as your location. So go and choose the appropriate server location. So I'm just gonna go for London. And then if we scroll down, you can go and choose your domain name. So I'm just gonna go for the domain name ecomcake.com. So once you have chosen your domain name, just click on add to basket. From here, all you need to do is complete the checkout process. Now always check the Verpex homepage for any discount codes that you can apply to your cart so that you can receive those discounts. 
and then once you have applied those discounts you can just click on continue to check out once you go to the checkout it's going to ask you to create an account with verpex so all you need to do is just enter in your first name last name email and choose a password and once you have entered in all of this information just click on create new account from here all you then need to do is just enter in your credit or debit card information or you can choose to pay with paypal and then all you need to do is just click on place order and pay you will then come to this page that will tell you that your order has been completed so now you have completed the first step in creating your e-commerce website with wordpress which is to purchase some hosting so now that you have purchased that hosting we can head over to your hosting account with verpex and start setting up your website so from here what we are going to do is we are going to go to the top right hand corner click on our account name and click on my account once you click on this you will be brought over to your verpex profile now what we need to do next is we need to make sure that our free domain is registered under our name and address so that we can use our domain to install wordpress and build our website so from your profile just scroll down and make sure that you add an address and a phone number to your profile and that way verpex can register your free domain so all you need to do is just click on add for your address and your phone number and simply add those once you have done that we are going to scroll up and we are going to click on support and now from here we are going to click on open a new ticket for the subject we are just going to enter in domain registration and then enter in the name of your domain select the department so you can just choose support and then in the message you are just going to say can you please register my free domain then enter in the name of your domain and just say i have added my details to my profile and then just click on create ticket once you have created that ticket for the domain registration you should see the ticket in the my tickets area and then you simply need to wait around 10 to 20 minutes for verpex to register that free domain so just have a check out for your emails because you should see an email from verpex just saying that that ticket has been completed and your domain has been registered and now it is ready to use so once you receive that email and the ticket has been closed you can now go to products and services and you will see your free registered domain and also your web hosting so now we can actually start creating our website because everything is set up and ready to go Go. so from here we are going to click on web hosting and then once we click on web hosting we are going to click on login to control panel once you click on this you will be brought over to cpanel now just think of cpanel as the area where you can manage your hosting and domains so you can do things like installing wordpress onto your domain to create your website you can create professional email accounts for your website address and things like that so the first thing that we are going to do is install wordpress onto our domain in order to start building our e-commerce website Website. so in order to do this we are going to click on build a website now from here we are going to click on install WordPress and once you click on this you will be brought to this area that says install WordPress so let me just go over a few things from this area so firstly you will see the website title so this is going to be generated at random so just leave this as whatever it is generated here i will be showing you how you can go and change the website title later on from the wordpress dashboard so that it is something a little bit more relatable to your actual site so don't worry about this for now you will see the plugin and theme set so don't worry i'm going to be explaining plugins and themes and we will install a theme onto our e-commerce store later on so just leave this as none for now you will see the website language so you can go and change the language to something more relevant for your site and then you will see the wordpress version so once again just leave this as the default then you will see the wordpress administrator so this is very important because these are going to be the credentials that you use to log into your wordpress website so make sure that you set them as something that you're going to remember and then perhaps save them in a word or notepad file so that you can access them because if you lose these then you are going to have to reset them to log into your wordpress website and that is the same for the email address make sure that this email address is something that you can access so by default it will generate the email address that is for your domain name but i recommend to go and change this to an email address that you can access so maybe if you have an outlook or a gmail account i would go and change this and i do recommend to use a generated password because these types of passwords are going to be a lot stronger which means that it's going to be more difficult for hackers to hack into your wordpress website so just go and choose a username password and an email address that you are going to use 
to log in to your WordPress website. And once you are happy with this, then just click on install. It will then say in the bottom right hand corner, installing WordPress. So just give it a few moments for that installation to be completed. Once the WordPress installation has finished completing, it will then say install plugins. Now we're not going to do this for now. I'm going to explain what plugins are in a moment. So for now, just click on no thanks. So now that we have done this, we can log into our WordPress website. So in order to do this, you can just go to the left hand side here and just click on login. Once you click on this, you will be brought over to your WordPress dashboard. And now we are ready to start building your e-commerce website with WordPress. So let me give you a brief overview of what WordPress actually is. So firstly, you will have the home. So this is where you'll see updates and things about WordPress. Then you will see updates. So any plugins and themes that you do install, and I'll go over plugins in a moment. So anything that you need to update on your site, essentially, you will see under updates. Then we've got posts. So originally WordPress was mainly a blogging platform. So this is where you would create blog posts. Of course, in today's tutorial, we're going to be creating an e-commerce website. So we're not, we're not really going to be using this that much in this tutorial. You will see media. So anytime you upload an image or a video to your site, it will be added to your media library but i'll be showing you how you can go and upload images directly from the front end using a drag and drop builder you will then see pages so anytime you want to create a new page on your store for example the contact us page or a privacy policy or an about us page we will be using this area you will also have comments so once again as i mentioned because wordpress was originally a blogging platform people could add comments to blogs and you could go and have a look at the comments here so once again we won't really be using this section in the tutorial. You also have the appearance. So this is where we can install a theme. So a theme is like a pre-made template that you can use to build your e-commerce website to speed up the process. So I'll be showing you how you can install a theme shortly. Then we have plugins. So plugins are basically a piece of software that you can install onto your WordPress website to add extra functionality. So this could be a contact form. It could be a plugin that allows you to connect your website to Facebook so that you can sell on Facebook. So there are a number of different plugins that we will be working with in this tutorial to enhance the functionality of your e-commerce store. Then you have users. So a user is basically someone that can access your site. So you are currently set up as the main user, but let's say in the future, you want to add staff members to your WordPress website to go and fulfill your e-commerce orders or to deal with your customer service, then you can go and add them as a user. You have tools. So this is where you can go and export data. Once again, we won't really be using this in this tutorial. This is quite high level and slightly more advanced. And then you have the settings. So you can just go and change things like the name of your site and things like that. So that is an overview of WordPress. So now that I have given you that overview, the first thing that we are going to do is install a theme onto our e-commerce store. So in order to install a theme onto our store, we are gonna to go to appearance, click on themes, and then from here you will see all of the themes that are currently installed onto your website. And from here, we are going to add a new theme that is especially built for e-commerce and WordPress websites. So we're gonna click on add new. And then from here where it says search themes, we are just going to search for Astra. And then you will see the Astra theme here. So we are gonna click on install. And once that theme has finished installing, we are going to click on activate. Now from here, what you can do is you can delete some of these other themes because they're just taking up space on your website. So I'm gonna delete the 2020 and the 2021. So you can just click on theme details and hit delete and then hit okay. And I'm gonna do the same for 2021 as well. So we'll just hit delete and hit okay. Now it's always good to have a backup theme just in case this theme does have any problems. So just keep this as a backup theme. So now if we actually click on our site's name, it will bring us to the front end of our website. So you can see this is our e-commerce store for now. Of course, it's looking pretty plain, not much going on here, but we will be working on this to build it into a fully fledged e-commerce store. So now let's head back to the back end. The next thing we are going to do is start installing some plugins that we will be using in order to add some functionality to our store. So we're gonna go down to plugins and we're gonna click on add new. 
Now from here, the first plugin that we will install is called this Classic Editor. So WordPress have updated their editor. I personally prefer to use the Classic Editor because it's easier to use. So just click on Install Now. Once that has finished installing, the next plugin that we will install is called Elementor. So just type in Elementor and then you will see this Elementor Website Builder plugin. Now this is a drag and drop website builder. So this will make it super easy for us to create our e-commerce store from the front end. So once again, just hit install. The next plugin that we are going to install is called Contact Form 7. So just type in Contact Form 7, and this will allow us to create a contact form so that customers can contact us. So once again, just hit install now. And the final plugin that we will install is called WooCommerce. So type in WooCommerce, and then you will see the WooCommerce plugin. So what the WooCommerce plugin does, it allows you to add e-commerce functionality to any WordPress website. So without this plugin, we can't have the cart and the checkout. So this is the most important plugin to install when it comes to creating an e-commerce website with WordPress. So once again, just hit install now. So now that we have installed all of those plugins, we can go to installed plugins. And from here, we are going to go and activate all of those plugins. Now, firstly, we are just going to delete any unnecessary plugins. So firstly, we are going to delete this Akismet anti-spam because I can show you a better security plugin to use. So we are just going to delete this. And then we are also going to delete this Hello Dolly plugin because this doesn't actually add any functionality that we require. So we can delete this. So once we have deleted those two unnecessary plugins, we can now select all of the plugins by clicking on this multi-select button. And then we can go to bulk actions and we can hit activate and then hit apply. Once you hit that, it will say selected plugins have been activated. So now that we have activated those plugins, we can start having a look at some of the settings. So firstly, we're gonna have a look at the WooCommerce settings. So from the WooCommerce plugin, just click on settings. Firstly, you can add your store address. So if you are just running your store from home, you can add the address and we can also go and change the currency of our store. So depending on which country you're in, you can go and select the most relevant currency. So I'm just gonna go and fill in an address. Now, some of the other WooCommerce settings such as shipping, payments, accounts and privacy, emails, integration and advanced. I will go over these later once we have actually added a product and then I can show you how all of these work. So for now, we will just leave the general settings. Now, the next thing I want to show you is how the Elementor page builder works. So if we go to the front end of our store, we will see right now it's still looking pretty plain and we don't have the option of actually using the Elementor page builder. Now, the first thing that we have to do is actually change our themes default layout. So you will notice that most e-commerce stores, they don't have this sidebar. They are just a complete full page. So we are going to change that layout by default. So we're gonna hit customize on our theme. Now from here, you will see multiple different settings that we can change. And I will be going over these in a bit more detail later on in the tutorial. But for now, we're gonna to go to the global settings and you will see this container. So the container basically just means how the page is contained. So instead of having content boxed, we can actually go to full width contained. So now you'll see that the content on the page has stretched out a little bit. And now we just need to get rid of this sidebar. So we can go back and we can go back once again and we will see sidebar. And from here, instead of having right sidebar, we're gonna change this to no sidebar. So now that we've changed that to no sidebar, we can see that we just have a plain page. So we can hit publish. Once you hit publish, we can just click on X to get rid of this theme customizer. And now I want to show you how we can create a page so that we can start building it with Elementor. So we're gonna go back to our WordPress dashboard. And from here, we are gonna to go to pages and we are gonna click on add new. From here, we are going to name this page. So we're gonna call it home. And then we are going to hit publish. And now what we are going to do is we are gonna to go to settings and we are gonna to go to reading. And then from here, it will say your homepage displays. We are going to choose a static page and where it says home page, we are going to go and choose that home page that we just created and hit save changes. Now, whilst we're here, I do want to show you how you can change the name of your website. So you can see we've got Bloggers Unite. So we can actually go to general and from here you can go and change your site title and your tagline. So for example, I could change this to Ecom Cake like this. And then your site title, it basically just sums up what your website is. So we could say the best place to find amazing cakes. 
So just go and add a little tagline about your store, what you are selling, or a catchphrase or something like that. So now from here, we can hit save changes. So now that we have set up that homepage, we can go back to pages. We can click on all pages. From here, we can go to that homepage that we just created. So just click on this. And then from here, we can click on edit with Elementor. So now we will see that we have a plain homepage and we can start adding elements with the Elementor page builder. So the way that Elementor works is you can add sections to any area of a page. And then within those sections, you can drag and drop elements. So if you click on this plus button, you can create any type of section. So with two split sections or three split or one single one or different sized sections. And then as I say, within those sections, you can drag and drop elements. So generally with an e-commerce store, I like to start with a large header section. So this is going to display some of our products. So I've just gone and selected a single section. Now with this section, you can go and decide how you want the content to be. So you can have it boxed or full width. So I like it to be full width, which means it stretches across the whole section. Now from here with this section, you can actually add background images to a section itself. So if we go to style, and then from here, you will see that we have the background type. You can go for classic, which is like a color. You can go for a gradient, or you can go for a slideshow. So if we click on slideshow, we can go and choose an image. And from here, we just hit a selector file. And then you can navigate to an image that you want to add to your background. So I've got this image of a drone. So we can hit open. And now that that image has finished uploading, we can click on create new gallery. And then we can just choose this image and click on insert gallery. And now we will see that we have that image. Now what we need to do is we need to make sure that the background size is correct. So what we can do is we can go to cover like this. And then if we go back to layout, we can go to height, we can go to minimum height, and we can choose something like 400 or let's say 500. And now we'll see that we have that drone background. Now you can add an overlay to this to make it a little bit darker. So if we go back to style, and then from here, what we can do is we will go to background overlay. So we'll minimize this, go to background overlay, and then we can go and choose a classic overlay and you can go and choose a color. So for example, I could choose this black color and now we can see we have that black overlay over the top. So now what you can do is you can drag an element on top of the section. So if you click on this little grid, it will bring you back to all of the different elements. And now we can go and drag a heading. So we can go and drag a heading in here. And if you click on to align it to the center like this, and now you can go and make this whatever you want. So we could say super spring sale. And then what you can do is you can add a subheading. So we can go and add a smaller heading underneath this. And we can go and make this, let's say a H4, which makes it a little bit smaller. And then we can go and add this, which says something like 50% off all drones. So that's how you can go and start adding elements to create a beautiful hero section for your e-commerce store. So now we can go and change around with the style. So we could make this a H1 to make it a bit bigger. And then you can actually go and change the colors. So I could come into here, I could change this to white, let's say for example, and you can also go and change the typography. So I can come in here with this little pencil icon and where it says the font family, I can go and change this let's say to quicksand, if I wanted to go and change it like that, you can also change the font weight. So I can make it a little bit more bold, let's say 900. And then I can go and change this one. Once again, I can go to style, I can change it to white. And then I can go to the typography. Once again, I can choose any type of typo typography that I want. And we could maybe make this a little bit less bold. And you can also go and change the size. So if we go back into typography, we could go and change this to 25, or maybe we could go and change it, let's say 80, if you wanted it super big. So I'm gonna go and change this to something like 50. So now we have that super spring sale. Now what we can do is we can also go and add a button. So we can come and drag a button just underneath here, like this. Once again, what we can do is we can go for the alignment to the center, and then we can go and add in a button that says shop now, for example. And then, of course, you can go and change the styling of this as well. Now you can change the size, so we could make it a large button. Personally, I like the smaller one. So if we go into the style again, we can go 
and change the typography. So once again, I could go and choose this quick sand font like this. And we can, of course, go and change the weight again. So if we wanted to make it slightly, slightly more bold, you can also change the size. So we could go for something like 20. And then you can go and change the color. So we've got the text color, which is white currently, and you can change the background color. So let's just go for black like this. I think that looks pretty cool. And you can also go and add animations to your button as well. So if we go to hover, you will see that we have this hover animation. So we're going to go for the grow, which basically just means it gets slightly bigger when somebody hovers over it. So once you want to go and save any updates that you've made with Elementor, you can just click on updates like this and it will go and save this. Now you can, of course, go and view your site in a mobile view. So if we go to responsive mode, we can also go and have a look at what it looks like on a tablet. So it's looking pretty cool and also on a mobile. So once again, it's looking pretty cool. So now that we've done that, I do want to show you how you can go and change the default typography and colors of your theme. So Elementor basically allows you to go and change all of the pages, but the overall Astra theme will still dictate the main colors and fonts of your website overall. So you can go and change these from the theme customizer. So if we just click on these three lines, we can click on view page. And we'll see that we currently have our home page like this. Now from here, we can click on customize. And from here, we can go back into global and we can go and change the global typography. So if we go to typography and now from here, we can go and change the body font family. So once again, I could type in the quicksand font to change the body font. And we can also go and change the font family for all headings. So we can come in here. I'm just going to choose quicksand as well. Now, if you are looking for some fonts that go well together, you can use a website called FontJoy, and you can go and generate different font pairings that you can use for your website. So that's an easy way to go and have a look for some font pairings. You can go for a balance, balanced contrast, high contrast, or similar fonts. So if we go to very similar and we hit generate, it's going to go and generate some fonts that are fairly similar to each other. So I could go and use the snippet and can it font for my website. So that's a way that you can go and have a look at some fonts to use on your website. So now that we have gone, gone and updated those fonts, now we can scroll up and hit this back button and we can go to colors. Now from here, you can go and change the theme color. So these are going to be the colors that are going to be used on your website. So you can see currently we've got this blue color. So that's on all of these menu items here. So I'm just going to go and change this to black, but you can go and change it to whatever you want to. And once again, you can use a website called coolers.co to generate different color pairings. So if we go to start generator and then all you need to do is just hit the space bar and it will go and generate a color scheme for you. So you can go and find a color scheme that suits your website. Something like this looks pretty nice. So once again, I'm just going to go and change that so we can see that all of that has changed. I don't recommend to change the site background, just leave that as default as well as the content background. Most websites will use white, which is much easier on the eye for visitors of your website. So once we have done that, we can now hit publish and we can exit this theme customizer for now. So now that I've shown you the basics of using Elementor, we will go back into Elementor and the next sections that we are going to add to our homepage are going to be to do with our actual products. And we don't currently have any products. Now, if I just show you another store, we can see we have these best sellers, we have shop by category. So you can do something like this on your homepage for your e-commerce store as well. But before we actually do that, we are going to have to add some products to our store. And we need to do this through WooCommerce. So we are gonna go and click on these three dots and we are gonna click on exit to dashboard. And now from here, we will see WooCommerce on the side and you will see products. So we are going to click on products. And from here, we can create our first product. So in order to create a product, we are just going to click on create product. So firstly, you just need to enter in a product name. So I'm just going to paste this product name in here, Mega Drone 3000 with 4K Ultra HD camera. And then what it will do is it will generate a permalink. Now, ideally, you want your permalink to be a little bit shorter than your actual product name. So we could go and edit this and we could just say drone with 4K Ultra HD camera. So the reason for that is because the shorter permalink, so the shorter the URL, 
makes it a little bit more friendly for SEO and it will help your product to rank a little bit better in Google. So then we can hit OK. Next up, you can add a product description. So a description is simple. So you could just go and say features. And once again, with the descriptions, all you need to do is just highlight and then you can go and, for example, change that to a heading and then it will go and add a paragraph and we could just go and add in a bulleted list. So we could say 4K HD camera. And then you can go and add some more bullet points with the features of the product. So once again, you're just going to be adding headings. So I've got technical details, what's in the box. So you can just keep this simple, add some information about your product. Ideally, you want to give as much information as you can in your product description so that it allows your customer to be able to make an informed purchase. And this is just going to increase the number of sales that you make if you have a lot of detailed information and you're giving as much information to the customer as possible. So there we have the product description. Now we can scroll down and we will see the product data. So you can choose to have a simple product. A simple product just means that the product comes in one variation and it has a simple price and that's it. You also have variable products. Now don't worry about grouped and external slash affiliate products. You won't really need to be using these right now. These are a bit high level, but you could potentially be using a variable product. And that just means that the product comes in different variations. So maybe it comes in different sizes. Maybe it comes in different colors and things like that. So I will be showing you how to set up a variable product. A simple product is pretty easy to set up. All you have to do is just add in a price. You can also add in a sell price if you want. Then you have the inventory. So I will go and show you how you can manage all of these with a variable product. So we're going to go to a variable product. From here, you will see SKU. So this is called a stop keeping unit. So this is basically just a number that you can assign to a product to help you to identify it easier. So if you have an e-commerce store where you have hundreds or even thousands of products, it's always good to have an SKU because like I say, you can use this number to identify multiple different products. Whereas if you just have a few different products on your store, you don't really need to worry about this. This isn't mandatory. You can go to manage stock. So if you click on enable stock management, then you can go and enter in the quantity so that once you sell out, it will show on your store that you sold out. So we could just say in here, we have 250 of these drones. You can allow back orders or not. So once it's out of stock, if you say allow back orders, it means people can still purchase it once it's out of stock. So it's up to you how you want to go and manage this. Next up, we have shipping. So you can go and add in the weight and the dimensions of the product, and you will see you have shipping class. Now I will be showing you how you can set up different shipping options within your WooCommerce settings later on. So we're just gonna leave this as no shipping class for now. Next up, you will see linked products. So if you go and create another product, you can go and link that product to another product as an upsell. So for example, I could go and create another product, which is a drone cleaning kit. And then I can go in here and I can go and link this product as an upsell. So that means anytime somebody's viewing this product, they will also see at the bottom for recommended products, they'll see the drone cleaning kit. So I'll show you how you can set that up in a moment. Next up, we have attributes. So the attributes are going to be the different variations. So you can go and set up a custom attribute. So I'll show you exactly what that means. So if I hit add, we can go and add in an attribute, for example, a color would be the attribute. And then we can go and add the different colors in the values. So we could go for black, and then you separate them with a pipe, we could go for white, and we could go for red. Now it's the same, let's say for size. I could go and add in a size as an attribute and I could say small, medium, and large. So if this was a clothing product, let's say for example, you can go and do that. So you can add in multiple different attributes. So then you just want to tick use for variations so that people can see this on the product page. So we can hit save. So you can have multiple attributes. So if we were to add another, we could go and say size and we could go for small, medium, and large and once again we can go for use for variations and hit save attributes and now if we go into the variations we can set this up so we can go and click on create variations from all attributes and click on go and hit ok and then hit ok once again and then we will see that we have black small black medium black large white small and so on. So it goes and creates all of those variations based on the attributes that we just created. Now what you are going to have to do is you are going to have to come in here and we will have to go to manage stock and then we can go and add an individual stock to each of these. 
you will also go and have to add a price to each of your variations. So maybe let's say the black one might be a little more expensive. So I could say the black one's gonna be 150 pounds and I can go and add all of these. So I'm gonna go and add the same price and the same stock. So we're gonna click manage stock to all of the black ones. So as we can see, I've gone and made all of the black ones 150 pounds. And if we scroll down, we can go and see I've added 99 pounds to all of the red ones. So the red ones are a little bit cheaper. So what you can do is you can then hit save changes and we're just gonna go and preview what that looks like for now. So just go and publish this product and I just want to show you exactly what that looks like. So we can click on preview changes and now we will see that the product is between 99 and 150. Let's say they go and choose the black one, it's gonna be 150. If they choose red, it's going to be 99. So that's exactly how it works. Now the description will come down here. So we will see that we have the description in these tabs, which is how the Astra theme works. Now what you can do is you can actually go and move this description to a product short description, which will show up here. So I'll show you exactly what I mean. So let's just go back to our WordPress dashboard. I'm actually going to copy all of this information from my product description, and I'm going to paste it into the product short description. So now we can go and hit update. And now that I've done that, I can go and hit preview changes. And now we will see that the description has come to this area. Now, when it comes to a short description, you don't really want all of this information. So what you might want to do is we can come back in here. We can grab this and I can paste it back into my product description. And with the short description, you're just summing the product up. So we can put in a short description in here, just saying that this drone boasts 22 minute flight time, giving you enough time in the air. This is a ready to fly drone, no assembly required. So this is just a short description summing up the product. And then the description itself goes into more detail about all of the features and what actually comes with the product. So if we hit update now, and then once we hit update, once again, we can hit preview changes. And now we will see that we have this small description. So like I say, you don't wanna make this too long because then it distracts the customer from actually going to choose an option and add it to the cart. So now we'll see the description down here with all of the technical details and then we just have a short description over here. So now that we've done that, once again, let's head back to our product area. The next thing I want to show you is how you can go and add a category. So you can go and sort your product by categories. So you can add different categories for your products. So if we click on add new category, we could say 4K camera drones, let's say. So I'm gonna click on add new category. So you can go and add as many categories as you want. We're gonna untick it from uncategorize. So now, anytime I add a drone with a 4K camera, I can add it to my 4K camera drones. Then we might have some other type of drones. Let's say if we add a new category and we can go and call this mini drones, let's say, for example and we can click on add new category and we can untick it. So later on, if I add a product, which is a mini drone, I can go and add it to the mini drones categories. And that is just a cool way of categorizing your products. So if we go over to this drone store here and we click on drones, you can see they've got a few different categories. So they've got DJI, ZLRC, they've got Holy Stone. So they're categorizing their drones by different make. So you can go and do that. So it's totally up to you how you want to go and add your categories. You can also add product tags. These are not that important. These are linked to your site's search bar. So if somebody searches in 4K, for example, then the product tag will be linked to this product. So it will bring this product up in the search results. So like I said, you could go and put 4K as one of the tags for this product. Like I said, these are not that important. And then if we scroll down, we do have the Astra settings. So you can go and disable some things on your product page, but I just recommend it to leave your product page as the default settings. Now you can also go and set a product image and add products to the gallery. So in order to set a product image, we can just click on this and then we can go and upload a file and click select files. And then from here, you can go and upload an image and click open. And then all you need to do is hit set product image. So this is going to be the main image on the product page and then customers can scroll through the product gallery. So I recommend to have both a product image and a product gallery. So once again, for the gallery, you can go to add product gallery images, upload a file and then click on select a file. And then once again, you can just select the images that you want to add to your gallery. We can hit open. And once they have finished loading, you can just choose both of them and hit add to gallery. Now we can scroll up and hit update. And now if I hit preview changes, we should be able to see that we have our product gallery 
with our different images. And then we also have our description. They can choose the color and the size. And then the customer can simply click on add to cart to add the product to the cart. So that is essentially your product page in a nutshell. You can go and customize this a little bit further as well. So if you go over to customize and from here, if we go to WooCommerce and then we go to single product and we can go and disable this breadcrumb. So if we hit disable breadcrumb, we can see it gets rid of that breadcrumb area. So it's up to you if you want to get rid of that. Maybe that makes it look a little bit nicer. I personally think that it looks okay with the breadcrumb because it tells the customer where they've come from. So they've come from home, they've gone into the 4K camera drones collection and now they're in this product. But like I say, it's totally up to you. So now we can just hit publish and we can close this. So now that we have done that, we can head back to our home page. And like I said, now you can start adding collections and best sellers to your homepage. So what I'm going to quickly do is I am just going to go and add a few more products with different collections, and then we'll go back to the homepage and we'll add those collections and products to our homepage. So as you can see, I've added two more products. So now we have three products in total and we have three different categories. So we have mega drones, mini drones and 4K camera drones. So now what we can do, we can add those categories also known as collections to our homepage. So in order to do this, just go to the left hand side where it says categories, we're going to right click this and click on open in a new tab. So now we've got our categories open in a new tab. So now I'll go back to this tab. And what we're going to do is we're going to go to our homepage. And from here, we are going to click edit with Elementor. Now from here, we can go and add those category sections. So firstly, we can go and add a header. Now you can actually copy and paste elements with Elementor. So if you just right click on the pencil, we can hit copy, then we can come in here and hit paste. And now we can see that that heading is in there. We just need to go and change the style to black so that we can actually see it. And we could go and change this to something like shop by category. And now we can go and add in our category. So I'm just gonna make that a little bit smaller. So if we go to typography, we're just gonna make this like 40. Now we can hit the plus button, we can add a double section. So now we have our double section, I'm going to make this a full width section. And what we can actually do is we can go to height, minimum height, and then you'll see column position. So these are the columns. So what we need to do is we need to hit stretch. So that basically just means that they are across the whole section, whereas if they're in the middle, you can see they're just small in the middle. So make sure you hit stretch. Now we can go to our first column, we can go to style, then we can go to classic, we can go and upload an image. So I'm just going to upload this image for the first section. And then what we can do is we can go to size, and we can hit cover. So now it covers this section. And we can do the same over here. So we can come into this section. If we just click on it, we can go to style. And then we can go to classic background image. Now just make sure that you pick an image that is the same dimensions. Because if you pick two images that are different dimensions, it will come out slightly askew. So we're just going to choose this image because this image and this image are the same dimensions, we can see 2560 by 1710 pixels, we can hit insert media, once again, we can go to cover. So now we have those two sections, we can go and add a background overlay. So what we're going to do is we're just going to go for a classic overlay. We're going to go for a black overlay. Now you won't see it immediately. The overlay will only be shown when you put another element over the top. So we're going to go to background overlay for this one as well. We'll go to classic, we'll choose a color overlay. So now, if I go and copy this heading here, and we paste this in here, we can see that that overlay shows. Now that overlay is quite dark. So what we're going to do is we are just going to change this the darkness of this overlay. So if we go to overlay, we can actually bring this down to make it a bit lighter. So we can see if we bring it to let's say 0 0.2, it looks a bit better. Now with this here, what we can say is we could say this category is drones under 500 pounds, let's say. So that could be one category. Now we can make this a little bit bigger. So if we go to typography, I'm just going to make this let's see 20, let's say 30. And I'm going to up the weight a bit like this. Now you can see that it's at the up the top at the moment. So what we can do is we can add something called a spacer. So we can add a spacer in here, and we can put in as many pixels as we want. So let's say 75, not 750, 75. And you can 
just do a bit of trial and error. So let's try 175, maybe that's too much. We could try 150, just until we see that it is in the center. So maybe 135. So we can see that's looking cool. And now what we can do is we can just copy this and we can paste it into this section as well. And we can copy this and we can paste this into this section. And now you see that we've got our two categories. So that's looking pretty cool. Now, once again, we can come in here and we can go and change the opacity if we want to make it a bit lighter. So we could go and do it 0 0.2, the same as the other side. And then you can go and change this, let's just say, mini drones, whatever category that you want to. Now, what we can do is we can go and add some margin to these sections so that they're not, they're not flush with each other. So if we just click on this edit column, we can go to margin, and we could add 10 pixels of margin to both of these. So we can come in here once again and add 10 pixels of margin. So that just makes them look a little bit nicer. And then you can also go and add your best sellers to your homepage. So what we can do is we can once again, copy this heading. And if we come down here, we can hit paste and we can just call this best sellers. And then if you go over to this website, which is WooCommerce. So if you just Google WooCommerce shortcodes, you will see the best selling products shortcode. So we can copy this shortcode and then we can go and add this to our homepage. So if we hit plus, we can add a single section and then we hit this grid. We can search for a shortcode. We can drag the shortcode in here and we can paste it. And now you can see that we have our three best sellers. So that's how you can go and add your best sellers. And then you can go and add as many spaces as you want. So I can add a spacer in there just to make it look a little bit cleaner. And that's the same with this shop by category. So I recommend always just to add some space between your elements that makes the site look a lot cleaner. So you can see that our page is coming together now and you can muck around with the layouts. So if we go and change this to full width, let's say, we can go and have a look at how that looks. That looks pretty cool. Maybe that looks a little bit better. So that is basically our homepage. And like I say, you can go and drag and drop the elements where you want to. So if we wanted to move the bestseller up here, we can go and just move these two sections. So now we have our best sellers. So I'll just go and add an S on the end there. And then underneath we have shop by category. So that is how you can go and add your products to your homepage. Now let me show you how you can link these areas to your categories. So from your WordPress dashboard, you can just click on products and then click on categories. Then from here, you can click on view to any of the categories that you want to link from your homepage. Then just copy the link. And then all you need to do is just click on the heading and where you see link, you can just paste in a link and now we can just hit update. So now that I've shown you basically how to go and create and lay out your homepage, I do want to show you how you can go and upload your logo to complete the homepage. So we're just gonna hit update to save our changes. Then we're gonna to go to view page. And in order to upload a logo to your header, you're gonna click on customize. And once the customize area loads, you can go to header builder, and then you will see site title and logo. We can hit select a logo, and then we can go to upload files, select a file, and then you can go and select your logo. We can hit open. And then once you have selected your logo, we can just hit select. You can go and crop the image accordingly and we can hit crop image. And now we can see we have our logo. Now you'll see that the site title is coming up so we can see where it says display site title. I'm going to turn this off. So we just have our logo on its own and you can of course go and resize your logo. So I think I'm gonna go for around 300. I think that looks pretty cool. And now we can just hit publish and hit close. So now that I've shown you how to create your homepage, I am going to go and show you how you can create some other pages on your store. So we're just going to be showing you how you can create the contact us page and some other pages like the about us. And then you can re replicate that process for all of the other pages that you need on your store. So in order to create a contact us page, we are going to go back to our WordPress dashboard. And then from here, what you can go and do is you are going to go to pages and we are going to click on add new. Now from here, we are just going to call this contact us and then we can go and hit publish. So now we have that contact us page ready. We need to go to the plugin that we installed earlier, which is the contact form seven plugin. And we can go and click on contact forms. 
Now from here, you will see that we already have a contact form created. So we can click on this. Then you will see the layout of the contact form. So it asks the customer for their name, email, subject, message, and then they have to hit the submit button. Now, if you come into mail, you will see that any contact form messages will be sent to this email, which is the site admin email. Now, if you don't know what this is, you can just go to settings and click on general. And then under your general settings, you will see the administration email of your WordPress website. So this is where all of the messages from the contact form will go. And the messages from, which basically just means how it's going to look in your inbox, is going to say WordPress at your domain.com. And then it will have the customer's subject and the message that they have written. So maybe it's I'm trying to track my order or something like that. So now that this contact form has been created, we can simply just copy this short code again. So we're just going to right click and copy this. And now what we can do is we can go back to pages, all pages. And then from here, we can find that contact us page. So we can just click on the contact us page and then we're going to hit edit with Elementor. Now from here, you can go and add a header section to any page, which I recommend doing because it makes it look a little bit nicer. So we're gonna hit plus. We are gonna go for a full section again and we are just going to make this full width. Then we're gonna to go to style. We are going to go to background. We'll go to classic and I'm just gonna make this a color this time. So I'm just gonna make it black like that. And then what we can do is we can just drag a heading in here and we can go to style and we can just change this to the style of the rest of our store. So I can come in and change the typography. So let's change this to quicksand again. And then we can go and change the weight. Let's just say to 900. And then if we go to content, we can change it to the center and we can just say contact us like that. Now you might wanna make it a little bit bigger if you want to. So let's maybe make it, let's try 40 like that. And you can also go and add some margin around this. So just like that, 20 pixels margin, just to make it look a little bit nicer. So now that we've done that, what we can do is we can add another section. And then what we can do is if we come back to the grid, we can search for the short code again, we can drag this in here. And then we can paste that contact form short code. And we will see that we have our contact form. And I recommend just adding a spacer above the contact form and below as well. So if we just go and add in another spacer below the contact form and we can go and have a look at how that page looks. So that's our contact us page. And like I said, you can always go into responsive mode just to make sure that your pages look good on a mobile as well. So you can see on a mobile, we have this Ecom cake site title. So I'm gonna go and change that now as well. So always go and double check what your site looks like on a mobile. So in order to change that, once again, we can click on view page. We can go to customize. And now from here, we can go into header builder. And this time we can click on this to go into the mobile view. So now you'll see, this is what it looks like on a mobile. So if we go to site title and logo, and we can get rid of display site title. So now we just have our logo. And now we can go for the logo width on a mobile. So we could go, go for 200 on a mobile, let's say. So now it looks a little bit better. And then we have this for our menu. And you can see that we have the contact us. So once again, if we go to publish and we close this, and now we can go to edit with Elementor. And now from here, once again, we can go into the mobile view. So if we hit responsive mode, we can go into the mobile view. We can see it looks like that, but we can maybe change the style. So if we go to typography, and this will be specifically for the mobile. So maybe we could change it to 30. So it's a little bit smaller on a mobile. So now let's go back to our homepage and see what that looks like on a mobile. So we're just gonna go and click on view page. We'll go back to our homepage. We'll hit edit with Elementor. And now once again, we can just go into the mobile view and just make sure that everything's looking good. So we can see it's all looking good. Now don't worry if you can't see the best sellers showing up on the mobile version. If you actually just go to your site on your mobile, you should be able to see them being shown up and you can go and change the sizes of things. So for example, the gap here maybe is slightly too large for a mobile. So maybe we wanna change it to 30 and the same with this one to 30 pixels. So just go and use a bit of trial and error to make sure that your site looks good on a mobile as well. And now we can go and hit update once you are happy with it and we can go and hit view page. So now that we've gone and created that contact us page and just had a look at fixing our site on the mobile view, 
we can actually go and just show you how to go and create some other pages for your store. So it's very simple to go and create the other pages for your store. You just need to go and replicate the process that I just took you through. So all you need to do is just go back to your WordPress dashboard. You're going to go to pages and you're going to go to add new. So let's just say you wanted to add a terms of service, for example. You can go and add your terms of service title. We're going to hit publish. And now what I recommend doing is where we have all pages, we're going to right click this and click open in a new tab, open this tab up. And now we're going to open that contact us page that we just created. So we're going to hit edit with Elementor. Now we're going to go back to our other tab and we're going to find our terms of service and we're going to hit edit with Elementor as well. And I'm going to show you how you can copy and paste elements from one page to another to speed up the process of creating your store. So what we can do is we can right click on this section and hit copy. We can come back to our terms of service and we can right click and hit paste. Now we can change this contact us to terms of service. And then what you can do is we can click plus on here. We can add a single section and then we can just go and drag a text editor in here. And then you can simply paste in your text for your terms of service. So if I just come in here and I can just hit paste. So now we can see we have our terms of service in here. Once again, you can go and change the style. So if we go to typography, I can go and change this to quicksand again, and I can go and change the color if I want to. So maybe if we want to make it a little bit darker, we could go for something like that. And again, you can use spaces just to go and add some space at the top and the bottom of your elements. And that just means that it won't be so close to the top and the bottoms of the elements just makes it look a little bit nicer. So now all you need to do is just go and repeat that process. Just go and have a look at other stores in your industry. There are going to be some pages that are mandatory for every single e-commerce website. So if we go and have a look at this e-commerce website, you're going to need to have a contact us, which we have created. You could create an FAQs. You're going to need a refund policy, a privacy policy, and probably a shipping policy as well. So you can just simply go and create those pages, just how I've shown you how to do this now. So now that we have done that, we can go and click on view page. Now, once you have created all of your pages, you're going to want to add them to your navigation. So you're going to want to have them in your footer and also going to add some things to your header as well. So we can go and create those menus now. So we're going to go back to our WordPress dashboard. And from here, we're going to go to appearance. And then we are going to go to menus. From here, you can create your first menu. So we're going to create a main menu. This is going to be our header menu. And then we're just going to click on create menu. Now from here, we can go and add anything we want to our menu. Now, when it comes to your main menu, I recommend just adding your collections. So if we scroll to the top of this, we can see that we have our collections and then they do have the contact us as well. So in order to do this, you can actually come up to the top here where it says screen options, and then you will see product categories. So we're going to tick this button. So now that we have ticked product categories, we can come into here and we can go and add those categories to the menu. So now we've added those categories Now you can go and change what it looks like. So the navigation label is what it's going to look like. So you could say 4K camera drones. You could make this shorter for the menu and we could just say 4K drones, but it is linked to the 4K camera drones category. And then we have mini drones and mega drones. So if we just go and hit save. Now what we can do is we can go and choose primary menu as the display location. So that's going to be our header. So if we hit save menu and now that should display in our header. So if we go to the front end of our store and now we can see we have 4K drones, mini drones, mega drones. So anybody can click on any of these categories. So if we click on these, it brings us to that category. Now you can also go and create a drop down menu. So if we go back and we go into appearance and menus again, we could say we want mega drones within the mini drones. Let's just say, for example, or for example, 4K drones and within 4K, we have mega and mini. So if you just drag them to the side like that, you will see that it will create a sub menu. So now if we go back to the front end, we can see under 4K drones. Now we have mini and we have mega. Now, of course, you're going to want to have your cart in your menu, which will be essential for an e-commerce site because you want your customers to be able to navigate to your cart. So we can go to customize in order to do this. And from here, we can go to the header builder 
And where we have primary menu, we can click on this plus button and we can choose cart. So now we can just swap those over. So now we've got the cart here and we've got the menu there, or you can swap them like that. So now we've got our menu and we have our cart. You can also go and add an account if you want to. It's totally up to you. So this will allow your customers to sign into their account and they can go and have a look at what they've purchased and things like that. And you can also go and change the design. So if we go into design, you can go for full width or content width. I like full width, it just brings it in a little bit more. So now we can go and hit publish. And once again, you can go and have a look at how your menu looks on a mobile. So if we go into the mobile view, we can see the off canvas menu. And that basically just means when we click on this little hamburger, this is going to be the off canvas menu. So we can go and change this once again. So if we hit publish and we close this, we can go back to our WordPress dashboard. We can go to appearance, we can go to menus, and then we will see that we've got this menu. So let's just change this back to a normal menu. So we're just going to drag this so that they're their own categories. And then we will see off canvas menu. So go and choose the off canvas menu. We can go and hit save. Now we can go back to our homepage. We can hit customize. And from here, if we go into the header builder again, we can go into the mobile view. And now if we click on this, we've got our off canvas menu and we can see we've got it there. We can also add our cart here. So if we go and choose our cart, we can see if we click on this now, the cart has been added as well. And you can go and add the account as well if you want to. So now if they click on this, they have their cart and their account. So I definitely recommend doing this. You can also go and change this button up here. So we could go and change it to this or these three dots like this. It's totally up to you. I'm just gonna leave it as the normal design. So now we can go and hit publish and close this. Now the next thing I want to show you is how you can go and add menus to the bottom. Now just make sure that you go and add enough space so this is something I was mentioning throughout the tutorial. So we're just gonna hit edit with Elementor and we are gonna add some space to the bottom of our page. So I'm just gonna scroll down and I'm just going to add a spacer in here and we can just go and have a look at how that looks. So that's looking much better. Now we can go and hit update. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna to exit to the dashboard and I'm going to show you how to create a menu for your footer. So we're gonna hit exit to dashboard and now from here, once again, we can go to appearance, we can go to menus. And now from here, we can click on create new menu. And from here, we can give this a menu name. So we could go and call this help, for example. This is gonna be the help menu. And this is where we'll have the contact us, the refund policy and so on. So we can click on create menu. And from here, we can go and add some pages that are related to help. So we could go and add the contact us page, the my account page, and then we can go and add in any other pages that you have created. So for example, your refund policy, your privacy policy, any of those types of pages. So now we can go and click on add to menu. So once you have added those pages to your menu, you can click on save, and then you can go and create another menu perhaps to do with your legal pages. So we're gonna click on create a new menu again, and then we can just call this legal, for example, and click on create menu. And then you can go and add your terms of service and perhaps your privacy policy to this as well. So we're just gonna hit add to menu. So now that we have created this menu, once again, we can hit save menu. And now we can add these two menus to our footer. So we're gonna go back to our homepage. And once again, we are going to hit customize. And now from here, if we scroll all the way to the bottom, we will see our footer and we can go to the footer builder. And using the footer builder, we can go and add those menus. So we can go and hit plus. And what we can do is we can go and choose widget one, and then we can click on widget one and we can just click on got it. And where it says add block, we can go and type in navigation menu. So go and choose that navigation menu. And then we can go and select that menu that we created, which is gonna be the help menu. And we can just go and call this help like this. So as a matter of fact, we're gonna put it in capitals. So now we can see we have that help menu like this. And now once again, we can do the same thing on the other side. So we're gonna go click a plus, we're gonna choose widget two. And now with this widget, so if we go back, we can go to widget two and we can hit plus, we can choose a navigation menu. And now this one, we'll choose legal and we'll call this legal like this. So now we have our help menu and our legal menu. Now you could play a bit around with this once again. So we could drag this down here instead and into here. So let's go and have a muck around with the layout. So you could do something like that and then you could add another widget 
into this section so it's totally up to you but for now we're just going to leave it like this and now down the bottom you will see this copyright powered by the astro theme you can get rid of this so where it says powered by you can just get rid of this if you want to so then it's just the name of your site and the copyright so now we can go and hit publish and if we close this now if we scroll all the way down to the bottom we can see that we have help with all of those pages and also the legal pages so now that we have created those menus you can see that your e-commerce site is coming together and there are a few last things that i want to show you so i want to go and dive into the woocommerce settings so that we can have a look at emails that are sent out to customers and also have a look at how to process payments so we're going to go back into our wordpress dashboard and from here we're going to go to woocommerce and we're going to go to settings so we've already filled out the general settings which is our store address and our store currency the next thing i want to show you is your shipping so you can go and create shipping zones so if we go and click on add a shipping zone and you could just go and add in your zone name so it could be for example united kingdom let's say or we could go for europe so it's totally up to you what shipping zones you want to create so we're just going to create international so we're going to say we do free international shipping for everybody so now it's going to say zone regions so we can actually just choose all of the regions so we can go and choose africa we can go and choose europe united states and we could also go and choose oceania so you it's up to you what type of regions you want to create and then you will see a shipping method so you can click on add a shipping method it's up to you you can go for flat rate free shipping or local pickup so flat rate you will decide the price or you can go and choose free shipping so let's say flat rate you can click on add shipping method so in order to set up the flat rate you can click on edit and then you could say 4.99 is the flat rate and hit save changes or alternatively you can just go and add free shipping so we can go and add free shipping and we can get rid of the flat rate so that just means anybody in these zones will get free shipping so it's totally up to you how you want to do it so now we can go and hit save changes so now we've had a look at shipping we will have a look at payments in a moment accounts and privacy so if we go to accounts and privacy and this is just to do with your customer checking out so you can allow customers to check out as a guest without them having to create an account you can also allow a customer to create an account during checkout so it's up to you so this is not really that important you will also be able to set your privacy page in here so if we go to privacy page and we just hit leave then we can go and set the privacy page so by default when you do install woocommerce it will create a privacy policy for you so you can see it's saying use this page so we can just hit use this page so now that we have done that we can go back to woocommerce and click on settings and from here we can go to emails and in this section it's going to show you where you will be notified when a new order comes through from your store so anytime a new order a cancelled order a failed order comes through it's going to go through to this email address so you'll be notified here now if we scroll down you will see the email sender options so the from name is going to be the name of your store so this store is called ecom cake so you're going to want to change this to ecom cake to the name of your store of course now the from address you can actually go and create a professional email address so if you log back into your verpex account and you just go to products and services we can once again log into control panel and from here we can click on create an email account you can go and choose the username so for example we could go for hello at ecomcake.com you could go for help you could go for admin whatever it is you want to use but i'm just going to go for hello and then you can go and choose a password once again i recommend generating a password and just saving this in a word or notepad file because it's going to be more secure and then once you have chosen the name and the password you can click on create so now we have this professional email address that we have created if you want to log into this email account you can click on check email and it will bring you to the webmail login and from here you can actually log in so we're just going to click on open and now we can see that this is the email account so you're going to copy this email address and i recommend to go and paste this into your from address 
in your WooCommerce settings because it's going to look much more professional for your store for you to be sending your emails from a professional email address. So now from here in the footer text of your emails, you can actually go and preview this. So it's gonna say click here to preview the template. So this is this footer here built with WooCommerce. I recommend just deleting that. We don't need that being sent to our customers and you can change the base color. So once again, if we click on this, we can see the base color is this purple. You can go and change this to any color you want. So I'm just gonna change this to black and we can hit save changes. And now if we scroll down, we can click on here to preview. This is what it's going to look like to our customers. So you can see there's two little dashes here at the bottom. We could get rid of that as well. So where it says M dash, we can get rid of that and just have the site title and hit save changes. So that is it for the email settings. Now, the last thing I want to show you is payments. So you can set up payments on your store. So if you go to payments, there are a few different types of payments that you'll want to accept. So you will want to accept PayPal and possibly debit and credit cards as well. So in order to do this, we are going to install some more plugins. So we are gonna go back to plugins and we are gonna go and click on add new. Now from here, we are gonna go and type in WooCommerce and hit enter. And now you will see these two plugins, WooCommerce Stripe Payment Gateway and WooCommerce PayPal Payments. So we're gonna install both of these because these will allow you to accept debit and credit cards and also PayPal. So just hit install now on both of these. Once these plugins have finished installing, we can go to installed plugins and then we can just tick both of these and then we can go to bulk actions and hit activate and hit apply. So now that we have activated both of those plugins, we can go back to WooCommerce and hit settings. Now from here, we can go to payments. And all you need to do from here is set up your Stripe and PayPal accounts. So if we just go to Stripe, we can go and click on setup. And then it's gonna say create or connect an account. So you just need to click on this and just go and set up a Stripe account. They will ask you to verify your account with some ID. So you will have to upload a driver's license or a passport or something like that. And then all you need to do is click on create and connect an account and it will automatically connect your Stripe account to your WordPress store. And that way you can start accepting debit payments. So if you go back to payments, once you have set up your Stripe account, you can just hit this little button to toggle on Stripe payments. So of course it's not letting me do it because it's prompting me to set up an account and connect it. And then once you have done that, you can go back to payments again, and you can scroll down and you will see PayPal and you can do the exact same thing. So just hit set up, and then it's just going to prompt you to activate a PayPal account. So once you click on this, if you don't have a PayPal business account, it will just ask you to set one up. And once again, it will automatically connect your PayPal account to your WordPress store so you can start accepting PayPal payments on your store. So now that I've gone over the payment settings for your store, there are a few last things that I want to go over before we wrap up the tutorial. So I want to show you how to create coupon codes for your store and also how to create a test order. So in order to create a coupon code, you can go to marketing and click on coupons. And then from here, you can click on create your first coupon. Now from here, you can name your coupon. So for example, we could say Black Friday 20 for 20% off on Black Friday. So you can call your coupon whatever you want. I'm gonna call this one 100 off because we are going to create a 100% off coupon code to use for our test order. Next up, you have the discount type. So you can go for a fixed cart discount, a fixed product discount, or a percentage discount. I recommend creating percentage discount coupons because these are easier for customers to understand. So then you can go for the amount of percent that they will receive off. So we could say 15% off. So for this one, we're gonna make it 100, like I said. You can allow for free shipping, so you can tick this box, and then you can have a coupon expiry date. So you can say the coupon will expire in, let's say one week from now. So that could be the Black Friday deal only lasts for one week or something like that. Then you have the usage restrictions. So you can add a minimum spend. So you could say a customer needs to spend at least 50 pounds or $50 before they can use the coupon code. For this one, I'm going to have no minimum. You can also go and only allow customers to apply the coupon to certain products, or you can also exclude products. You can also only allow the customer to add a coupon to certain product categories or exclude categories, and also certain customer emails as well. And then you have the usage limits. So this basically just means how many people can use the coupon. So maybe you could say, this coupon can only be used by 100 people. And then how many times can that person 
use the coupon. So maybe it's one per customer, let's say for example. So for this 100% off one, I'm gonna say one per customer because I only want it to be used once by me for the test order. So we have 100 off and we are going to hit publish. So now that we have created that coupon code, we can go to our homepage and we can create a test order. So let's click on one of our products and we are going to add this to the cart. So let's go and select the color and the size and then we are going to click on add to cart. Now that we have added that to the cart, we can go to view cart. And from here where it says coupon code, we can enter in our 100% off coupon code and hit apply coupon. Now from here, all we need to do is click on proceed to checkout. From here, we can go and enter in some dummy billing details. So I've just entered in some dummy billing details and now we can click place order. So now you can see exactly what the customer will see when they place an order. So that's really amazing. Now, if you go back to your WordPress dashboard, from here, you can go to WooCommerce and you can click on orders. And then from here, you will see the order. So then you can go and click on this order and you can, of course, go and fulfill the order. So you can go and change it from processed to on hold, completed, refund, or whatever you want. So once you have shipped the products, you can, of course, change it to completed and your customer will receive an email saying that the product has been shipped. So you can update that and then just hit update. So that is it for this tutorial. Hopefully if you've come this far, you now have your e-commerce store set up and you are ready to start selling online. If you have found value in the video, give it a big thumbs up and make sure to subscribe to the channel for more WordPress and website creation content. This has been Elliot with the Verpex and I'll see you in the next one.